After you've completed blending your long exposure foreground with your Milky Way sky, you notice that your sensor was able to pick up quite a few more stars than you were expecting. With this star minimization technique, you'll finally be able to control the amount of stars that show up in your overall image. So my friend Chris and I were out in the Eastern Sierras last week shooting the Milky Way under like beautiful night conditions. We had a new moon phase, we had weather in the mid 30s, which allowed us to really crank our ISO up to around 12,800, which is crazy high, but my camera wasn't picking up too much uh, hot pixels or it, the sensor wasn't overheating. so I kind of wanted to test the limits of my camera and I uh, was really happy with uh, just what I was able to capture from that. I picked up, these are raw images with, um, I mean, it, it's hard to tell, but this is, I'm gonna remove my foreground, but this is my, basically my raw image of my foreground, of my sky. Uh, I added a little, I bumped my exposure just a tad, uh, but this is a 13 stack of just raw images. And I mean, the detail is incredible, but there's noise from this high ISO in the foreground and uh, definitely in the sky. So I also took a few uh, long exposures. So these are four long exposures ranging from two minutes to four minutes and the results are great. There is some noise going on, obviously, from the, regardless, the, the sensor is going to heat up with that extent to, or that length of time with the, an exposure. Uh, so I'll apply a technique to removing that noise in my foreground as well. But I, I'm pretty happy with the results prior to the star minimization technique that I'm about to teach you. The star minimization technique that I learned uh, was from a few videos on people doing deep sky uh, photography. And a lot of those images I, I've noticed is that there's really no stars when you get like these like gaseous like nebula and, and planets and all that kind of uh, deep space photography. And I was wondering like if I could apply that same technique to my landscape photography. And fortunately I can. So without getting like muddy images from applying like ridiculous uh, noise removal filters that Lightroom has, uh, I decided to go into Photoshop and kind of play with the star minimization technique. So with the star minimization technique, you're gonna wanna select your sky layer and don't select the mask, select the sky. Go into select, color range, and then choose highlights and I mean, you can, with this color range, you can select all sorts of different like specific colors and your midtones and your shadows, but highlights are what we want to deal with. We want a good selection around our galactic core. So I'll play with, I'll probably keep my fuzziness around 52% and my range, I'll do 189. And I'm going to press OK. Now, as you can see, it's also made selections in our landscape, but because we have a uh, mask applied to this, it's only going to affect uh, whatever's on the top layer uh, or above the mask. So it's going to be the sky, it's not going to be the, the foreground at all. So we will then go to select, modify, expand, and we're going to set our the expansion by two pixels. And this is really going to make a, a bolder selection of the sky. Press OK. And then we are going to go into select, modify, feather and have that, so do one pixel and press OK. Now what this has done is gone in and made a good selection of uh, the stars that are not part of the galactic core. And we have all these marching ants everywhere. Uh, so the marching ants are gonna have to sit there for a little while, but we're gonna go into filter, other, minimum. And under minimum, we're gonna wanna play with the radius, but I'm gonna bump this up to, uh, I'll zoom in first but just to show you like what happens when you raise the radius, I'll start at point two and you can see that there's still a lot of noise going on. 
if I go to two, look what happens. It looks like we just have a diseased looking image. So I'm gonna keep my, my selection around. If I do, I'll do 0.8. I'm pretty happy with that number. I've done that to quite a few of my images and the number is gonna vary image to image. But with a selection, press OK. And then I'm gonna zoom out real quick and I'm gonna press Command or Control D to deselect the image. And I made a uh, layer copy of this image. So this is with the effect applied. This is without it applied. And to me, there's just, I don't know. It, to me, it's just a cleaner look. There's less noise. Um, there, it, it's more of a dreamier feel to your overall image. And I, I like how it's uh, kind of changed how my images are now. And it hasn't applied anything to the foreground. So because of this noise that's going on in the foreground, I'm gonna do a simple technique of selecting my foreground, going to filter, going to noise, dust and scratches, and then my radius is one, my threshold is 15. These numbers will vary, but typically they're gonna be between a radius of one and two, and then your threshold, depending on where your radius is, it can be upwards of 15, or maybe something like 24, 25, if your radius is two. And I'll press okay. And let's take a look at how much noise I was able to remove by adding that dust and scratches and the star minimization and it is get in clean. Now, after the star minimization, I'm gonna go in and dodge and burn a little bit. So I'll select my dodge tool. My exposure is around 4% right now and I've selected highlights and I'm just gonna brush in there a little bit. And then I will go to burn and I'll keep my exposure around three and it's shadows that are selected and yeah, it's just, and this is only affecting my, my sky again, not my landscape. And to me, like this, this really helps kind of make that dreamy looking Milky Way pop. It's even affected the, the foreground. Um, I can go in and dodge my foreground a little bit. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm loving this technique. Uh, it's it's really it's changed the way that I, I'm, I'm thinking about editing my images um, but I'll toggle this off for a second so you can see the before and then this is just a star minimization technique apply this is a radius of 0.25 which is not much uh, this is a radius of 0.5 and then this is a radius of one now even with this applied, I can still go back in and kind of reduce the opacity of this layer just to bring back some of the stars I, if I want to. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is 0.75% and it looks good. Um, I mean, it, it's really just personal taste on what you think looks, uh, how you want your image to look. But this is the minimization technique. I love it. I'm using it a lot more with my Milky Way photography. If there's anything else you'd like me to go over, whether it be time lapses, filters, uh, long exposure foreground stuff, let me know in the comments below. Uh, again, thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate the support and I hope that these videos are helping you out. Um, get out there, shoot more Milky Way and uh, looking forward to talking to you guys soon. Thank you.